Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat and welcome to our third episode this this week para po sa ating anniversary week ng ating Facebook live sessions entitled We Are People of the Word and uh, you have uh, seen since Wednesday at kahapon po ang ating mga live episodes we brought to you an interview by Brother Andrew um, six decades after he first smuggled Bibles and Christian literature into the communist Eastern Europe. At kahapon naman po ay yung Project Per wherein you met the the brave men who risked their lives uh, just to bring one million Bibles to, to China. And you have heard there that that was used by the Lord actually to have a revival sa Chinese church. At napakasarap po na to na isip-isipin at balik-balikan na you have a, open doors has a part in the revival of the Chinese church, especially during such a dark um, a time in, their, in the church life of in China dahil niya sa, sa persecution uh, in their country. At uh, ngayon, 65 years later, we celebrate that and we celebrate everything that the Lord has done sa gawain ng Open Doors. And one of them is, is the milestone that is Project Per, which you saw the story kahapon. And as promised, we will interview ngayon, at kita niyo na po siya ngayon, ang uh, daughter, one of the daughters, the eldest daughter actually, of the only Filipino crew in Project Pearl. And ako bilang isang Pinoy po, at bilang, bilang isang Pinoy na open doors worker, I'm just so proud that merong Filipino po doon sa ganong klaseng um, risky at kalaking um, mission endeavor to the Chinese church. Kaya ako, I'm just so proud of that. And I'm just, we are just so privileged. Uh, wala man si Kuya Ron ngayon, but I know he's smiling. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's still, a, it's equally a privilege that we are, we will be joined by his daughter. At ako po excited to, to learn, to, to hear, and to see her perspective. No? Siya ay isang anak ng isang, hindi lang ng isang uh, open doors worker, pero anak ng ng isa sa mga brave men doon sa Project Pearl. I'm excited to hear um, what is her perspective bilang isang anak. So, without further ado, please welcome, kasama po natin for our third anniversary episode, Mrs. Hazel Paras Carino. Hi, Hazel! Hello! Hi! Yes. Uh, nice Magandang umaga. You. Umaga po ba? Magandang umaga gabi. po. <laughs> gabi! Oh, gabi, yes. Magandang gabi po. Kamusta? <laughs> and um ngayon po syempre ano uh, pregnant po pala ako ngayon yes <laughs> yeah. so, by the end of the week ano third trimester na so mm -hmm. we're getting Con into the nesting phase <laughs> hey, congratulations Hazel so thank you um kamusta uh, before we go into the project pearl details you know kamusta muna ikaw kayo ni Chaps ang iyong asawa especially that you are pregnant and we are still um, suffering in this pandemic. Kamusta kayo and how are you coping up? Uh, yeah. Actually, interesting kasi newly married kami. Eee, and then, nagkaroon na agad ng lockdown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, ayun. So, yung inisip naming adjustments before, nag-adjust um, nag ka, nakayang dalawa, and then you go to work, ganyan. Biglang, another adjustment ulit kasi lockdown naman, ganyan. Mm. Tapos biglang, we found out na we were pregnant. So, maraming adjustments talaga. And siguro blessing na lang na um, I'm currently working from home. So, today, may pasok ako. Oh, thank <laughs> and you. And it's really a blessing. <laughs> oh, it's really a blessing talaga na may ganitong opportunity pa rin to earn, to still yes. save money kahit yung yeah. pandemic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a blessing na makapag-work from home, no? Hindi lang yung protection from the pandemic, pero may, the fact na meron tayong trabaho, no? Na, may provision. May provision yeah. ng Panginoon niya sa dami ng sa dami nang nawala at ngayon trabaho. But anyway, it's uh, good to hear. Uh, at sabi mo, no, you are entering your uh, third trimester this yes. end of the week. End of the week. End of the week. Wow, congratulations. Uh -huh. Baka mamaya, ka-birthday ko pa yung anak mo. Ha? Okay. Kaya ba-birthday mo? Ito PM ko sa'yo. Baka mag-bati yan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, so let's go into the details, Hazel. Yes. So yesterday po, lahat, po, lahat tayo witnessed um, the story of Project Pearl, no? delivering one million Bibles in one night in China for the Chinese persecuted uh, believers. And 
uh, Hazel, your father, si Kuya Ron, was part of that. Was part of those uh, 20 a brave men who risked their lives. Uh, hindi nila alam kung makakabalik pa sila after that. Mm -hmm. Or even kung makakatong-tong pa nga no, dun sa, sa, sabi ni Paul, uh, Santo uh, Coast Beach yeah. in China. No? So, bilang anak niya, um, paano mo ito nalaman? How did Kuya Ron um, tell it to you? Was it like a bedtime fairy tale mm -hmm. story every night? <laughs> na excited kang marinig lagi? Or... Nilihin ba niya ito sa'yo at nabasa mo na lang somewhere tapos kinanpunt mo siya? Uy, part na pala nito. So, how did Kuya Ron's daughter knew about Project Pearl? Uh, okay. Um, yan, when I was a kid, I've already heard uh, bits and pieces of the story. Pero I don't, I didn't really get the whole picture sa utak ko. Hindi um, mm -hmm. ko alam yung risk na meron doon. Hindi mm -hmm. ko alam kung ano. Dangerous. Pati ang alam ko lang, like, smuggle siya ng Bibles. I don't, didn't even know na gano kadami yun. Ayan. And si Papa kasi, si Dad, um, he isn't really open sa amin mm. about his missionary work. Especially mm. sa aming mga anak niya. And I think now, it's because of the dangers or the risks yeah. na that came with it. So, all I knew as a kid, when Dad is in a mission trip, Mom and I would just pray for him, mm. um, for his protection. Tapos, mm. when, pag babalik si Papa, um, hindi talaga siya nagsishare eh, ng mga missionary stories niya. Ang isishare niya lang kung gaano kaganda yung country, kung gaano kasasarap yung mga pagkain, oh, sure. um, kung gaano kasaya yung mga tao doon. And he would also give out pa sa lubong. And then after, after nun, babawi siya sa amin mm. for the lost time. Mm -hmm. uh, taking us out for dinner, movie, shopping. So it was always like that. So he didn't really share his work to us that openly, but he kept his work just at work. Pag nasa bahay, ang bida yung mga anak niya. Ganun lang siya. So, as for Project Pearl, I just got to know yung story na yun when I was in college na. So, it was interesting um, when you finally heard the story na was actually published in Time Magazine. <laughs> Anong yes. ko All this time. <laughs> All this time. <laughs> diba? Parang you're that, ano pala, ganun pala yung influence na nagawa mo. And I always thought na you were just, you know, ordinary person doing an ordinary job, but not ordinary pala. Mm -hmm. So, back then, yun nga, nung college ako, I was majoring in communication. So, we had subjects about filming, ganyan. And we had this project where we had to interview someone interesting and mm -hmm. make a documentary about it. And growing up, I was always curious about my dad's mission work. Kasi nga, hindi siya masyado open sa amin. Mm -hmm. He would tell little stories, pero ayaw niya nang sobrang detailed kasi of course, his persecution, medyo ano, bigat. Bigat, yes. And, yes, ganun. <clears throat> so, ayan. Uh, I was always wondering why people spoke of him so highly. Parang, mm. ano meron? Bakit, ano, <laughs> bakit parang lahat sila, pag sinabing yung pangalan niya, parang, uy, magaling yun, grabe yung ginawa niya, ganyan, pati ko alam ko ang niya. So, I made a documentary about that. I interviewed him, and the first story that he told me was the story of Project Pearl. Because it was that project na he, God launched him into ministry. So, hindi siya yung ultimate finale, grand finale project. It was a first project. So, yun yung makakaano. Uh, he started with a bang, parang ganun. So, it was a very trip that set his heart into ministry. And it was the trip na made him say na, Lord, I want more. Parang ganun. So, Project Pearl was just the start of his many adventures with God. So, yun. I think Papa mentioned then that the most that they can usually smuggle kasi sa China before was 37,000. And that was one year na. Parang one year nilang operation yung 37,000. But for this very mission na pinasasasali siya, the mission was to um, send one million Bibles to China in one night. So, parang hindi na makita yung logic na he was only 19 or 20 years old. So, pag bata ka, parang feeling mo everything is possible. Pero for him, he knew na, baliw ba to? Parang ganun. They're crazy. Parang ganun. Mm -hmm. Inyuna niyang reaction. But the Lord spoke to him immediately na mm -hmm. parang sinabi ni Lord na this is a faith mission and impossible is out of the picture. And Nung sinabi ni Lord sa kanya yun na 
he knew in his heart na no matter how crazy this is, no matter how dangerous this is, Papa just knew in his heart na this trip was bound for success. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's how he got faith or yung strength to continue on. So, yun. Yun, yun yung nalaman ko nung nag-interview um, ako kay dad. So, hearing that na college ka na, parang, yun, yun mo lang sa akin sinabi. I mean, I could, I could have handled it naman nung high school ako, di ba? Pero, yun, nakaka-proud lang. Nakaka-proud yeah. na <laughs> yung the fact na he, he was a Filipino, the only Filipino there, na parang, at least, di ba, he represented not just open doors. He represented not just the Christian, but he also represented the nation. Na parang, this is the Philippines' gift yes. to China. Uh-huh. So, hmm. so, it was really, um, it was really a living evidence, even yung mga existing Chinese churches ngayon, na hmm. parang, God who began a good work in the lives of these men mm-hmm. will be faithful to complete it. Even ngayon, he's still completing it. And that's mm-hmm. really something na I really cherish yung story na yun. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Hazel, for that. Nagka-goosebumps ako uh, yeah. when you shared, uh, when you pointed out <laughs> that he did not only represent the, Christ- the Filipino Christians or the Christians or Open Doors, but he represented the entire mm-hmm. nation in that um move and that is yes. that is mm-hmm. our one of our country's gifts to to, to China no nakaka sa panahon ngayon yes. po na, <laughs> ang dami nangyayari sa bansa na hindi natin maintindihan kung bakit mm-hmm. and it, it makes us it, it makes us question mm-hmm. why and even makes us go out of the country no pero this stories mm-hmm. stories like this for remind us that we were made Filipinos by the Lord for a purpose. He designed yes. us as is and we should be we should continue to be proud of it and cling to that. And that mm-hmm. sa China meron tayong um peace in the in yes. the revival of the church you know, through the through project. Yes. I'm sure marami pang iba pero at least through project mm-hmm. meron tayong representation yes. through the life of Kuya Ron. Thank you for yes. that reason. So no so you only knew about it during the interview? Doon lang? Yes, so. <laughs> no, o, doon lang. So, parang nung interview, nakatunganga lang ako na parang hindi ko alam kung legit yung sinasabi niya. So, syempre, dad ko siya. So, baka, med, baka kwentong barbera lang ko. Yes, but yes. then he showed me yung time map. Oh. Okay. Kita ko rin yung book ni uh, Paul Esther Brooks ba yun? Night of a Million Miracles. Night of a Million Miracles. Nakita ko yung pangalan doon. So, parang, okay, sige, legit. <laughs> So, nakaka-proud. Nakaka-proud talaga. Eh, nakakagulat. Nakakagulat. Yeah. Uh, so, doon mo lang nakita yung Time Magazine article yeah. and, and the so, book itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, nung, when you, so when you learned about it, you were kind of shocked. Um, after the interview, anong mga sinabi mo sa kanya? How did you feel? Any other thoughts? How did you talk about it after you per- the first time you knew about it? May nagbago ba sa tingin mo sa kanya, sa relasyon nyo? Uh, after knowing that he was part of something big as that? I think mas naging curious ako sa work niya. Hmm. I, I think kasi yung work niya hindi naman nag-stop dun sa Project Pearl. Eh. Yeah. Parang it's not, hindi lang sa China, but then yung work niya nag-extend pa sa Vietnam, sa Laos. So it made me curious na ano kaya ginagawa niya sa Vietnam at sa Laos ngayon, no? Parang ganun. Uh, I think mas mm. naging curious ako, mas gusto ko na siyang pag-usapan mm. and um, it was really nice na I got to talk to my dad about his work before he left. Um, it was really nice to really hear it from him himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, nakaka-proud din and um, yun, I think we, siya kasi nakakatawa kasi he doesn't think of himself as a hero or any sort of that. Sobrang humble niya kasi. Mm-hmm. Um, hindi na, na, na nakikita ang parang resume at ang mga ginagawa niya. Talagang, it's just about service. It's just about showing love sa mga tao. And um, it's so rare for to see something like that sa isang ministry yeah. or isang magma-ministry. Mm-hmm. Kasi parang we get caught up with the accomplishments but then mm-hmm. siya, he chooses to keep it to himself. And kapag narinig mo from someone so humble, mm-hmm. from someone who just wants to serve, mm-hmm. sobrang precious ng mga ex- learning experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, did, um, mas naging open ba siya after you knew about it? 
about uh, his work at Open Doors, sa mission work. Yeah, I think kasi dahil mas naging matanong ako. Mm-hmm. Kaya mas naging open siya. Mm-hmm. So, after na marami yung follow-up questions sa kanya, <laughs> ganyan. Ang daming yeah. questions. Bakit ito, ganyan. Mm-hmm. And, minsan no, matapatanong ka rin na parang, um, why would you risk your life or something like this? And, uh, minsan kasama ko siya sa trips. Sinasama niya kami talaga sa trips, mm-hmm. sa mission trip niya. Pero, sa safe area lang yes. kami, ganyan. Yes. But then, if, when I meet the people na miniministeran niya, they call him brother, yung yeah. bata, they call him they call him father, ganyan. So, parang, I get to feel na these people are also part of my family. Mm. Parang, hindi lang, parang hindi lang na to separate na work and then family. Parang, mm. when uh, nang nalaman ko lahat, parang nagkaroon ako ng parang blood relation sa mga mm-hmm. um, taong miniministeran niya. And so, yun. Parang mm-hmm. it is also a gift to family din sa mga yeah. people in Vietnam, people in Laos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that what, and yung body of Christ, no, yung oneness, makes it more real sa experience mm-hmm. mo, no? Because of uh, the ministry that yes, brought so, so, so. in parts of the world. And meet, uh, Christians from these mm-hmm. countries. Okay, so you kind of you mentioned a question na In fact, ano naging inumin ng ko pa yung mga taga Vietnam. Yes, yes, I saw that sa so wedding mo yeah. That that oh. was that's a testament no of of oh. the of the ministry of 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 Puyaron mm-hmm. to the persecuted church. Now it goes beyond reports. Yeah. <laughs> it goes beyond outputs no but the relationship was there as yes. brothers in the Lord yeah. So, is it okay na you mentioned the question na uh, you asked, were, were you able to ask this to Kuya Ron nung sinabi mo na why are you risking your lives for these people? Ano, na, na, tanong mo ba ito at kung oo, oh, oh, nasagot ba? What was his answer? If if you got the chance to ask him this. Hmm. Uh, naalala ko sinagot niya yun eh. Pero, hmm. um, kasi, nang nalaman ko yun, parang, Siyempre, nag-mission-mission mission pa rin siya. Yeah. So, of course, I would worry then for his safety. Yes. I'd be scared mm-hmm. for his safety mm-hmm. every time na maalas siya. Mm-hmm. Um, si Dad kasi, ano eh, parang, if you if you know him then kasi, um, pag alam niyang si Lord ang tumawag sa kanya, nothing and no one can ever stop him. Siguro mm-hmm. kahit sino. And that's what makes me proud of him then. And mm-hmm. nakita ko naman din yung faithfulness ni Lord sa life niya. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keeping mo, ang tagal niya na nag-work sa open doors. Ang dami na nang nagawa. But yeah. um, he's, he's still safe and secure then. Parang yes. never naman siyang na-impreso. Or yes, something. yes. Amen. And I think that yung faithfulness lang talaga ni Lord was mm-hmm. very evident sa amin. Sobrang witness na witness talaga namin. So, mm-hmm. Wala, parang shared like faith na lang din ako na I know that it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. Binan nga siya. I just knew Kuya Ron for a few days. <laughs> Kasi nang pumasok ako sa open doors, he was uh, about to leave already. Kaya, but I can attest to mm-hmm. what you are saying as at least as a co-worker in the Lord for a short time. So, he's uh, knowing his involvement sa Project okay. Pearl, um, and the rest, na he, the rest of his years that he continued as an open doors worker. Um, how how did that impact you as his daughter, and as a Christian, uh, or maybe as a as someone I who is also ministering to others? Yeah. Um, I think you the persecuted Christians, the persecuted church will always, always occupy a big space in my heart. Um, Papa effortlessly influenced me to have a heart for the persecuted nations then. Um, Hindi na kami finors na pag-pray mo sila or ilaw mo sila. But mm-hmm. he rather led by example. Kasi mm-hmm. he showed us that ministry wasn't just a job description. He showed that that ministry was not a career na kailangan na climb ng ladder. Parang ganun. He just showed us na ministry is your family and you um treat your people that you minister to as a family 
So, yun nga, uh, people in those countries look to him as a brother, as a father, and I feel like these people are also part of my family, and I feel like I'm related to them. And that's yeah. how it uh, nabuo yung heart ko for the persecuted church. And knowing the story of Project Pearl, how God used that mission to launch mm-hmm. my father into the ministry, mm-hmm. um, I always find myself asking na, Lord, uh, what will be my Project Pearl? Kung ito yung, oh, wow. yung project ng life. Ano pa ako, Lord? Ano yung akin? And what and what and when will be the moment when I can say na it's my turn. It's mm-hmm. my time. Mm-hmm. And siguro with that uh, Project Pearl sto- story, na-inspire ako to live a legacy na outlives me. Yung kahit wala na ako, yung legacy pa rin, nabubuhay, yung work pa rin, nangyayari, ganyan. And I want more than anything to inherit that kind of heart for the ministry talaga. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember those were the words of Kuya Ron dun sa documentary that you that you um, did with him. I, if I remember correctly, I think yun yung final, yung last words niya, no? A message to the youth, no? Na, yeah, yung, yung going, be, yung living a legacy, no? And actually, yung, ito na po yung legacy ni Kuya Ron, no? Yung sinabi ni Hazel na, even though he's not anymore here with us, we continue to talk about him. We continue, the, the impact continues. At hindi lang po, hindi lang po sa buhay nila, hindi lang pamilya ni Kuya Ron, pero in a country like China. That's how the Lord has used that Kuya Ron. Yeah. So, Hazel, uh, na babanggit na natin kayo na, no, that Kuya Ron did not stop with Project World in his involvement with the persecuted church but actually mm-hmm. that launched him no sabi mo nga no it was it was a he was a, he had a good um, start no started with a band no and then he continued mm-hmm. serving the persecuted church until he was he was called home by the lord so how was it like mm-hmm. um, being a child of a full time worker of a full time open doors worker no uh, well your anak is who is growing to be one, pero we are talking to someone who has <laughs> grown and now and now is starting her own family. So I'm, I'm curious, how is it oh. like? How is it like to to grow up as a child, as a as a as a woman, as a daughter, um, mm. na anak ng isang uh, someone um, that Siguro ano eh, as a kid, Papa was always away from us mm-hmm. for about once or twice a month. Mm-hmm. But yung absence niya, it was never felt. Because he would mm-hmm. always make up for the lost time kapag umuung sa. So we never felt na he was away or he was absent. So as a kid, I never really understood his work um, and the risk na meron yung work niya. Mm-hmm. But growing up and joining some of his trips, uh, mm-hmm start na akong intindihin yung nature ng work niya. I understood the risk. Mm-hmm. But I got to understand na he was also never alone then in those trips. I felt that God's presence was um, always with him. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the one that gave peace to my mom and sa amin na uh, my dad's gonna be okay, my dad's gonna be safe, my dad's gonna be secure. And we just knew na her dad has worked so many years with open doors, building livelihoods, building churches, and all that, um, to the point that the leg- legacy already has up- outlived him. And with open doors, it was a blessing kasi yung group na to, hindi lang siya group ng employees, hindi lang siya group ng staff, hindi lang siya basta ministry work lang. But open doors was a family to us. It was a community. Kilala ko yung mga co-workers ni Dad sa Open Doors. And um, I also got to grow up with fellow kids ng Open Doors staff. And we grew up together. And ngayon, ano, uh, I treat them talaga as lifetime friends. And sobrang blessing talaga ng family na to sa atin. Hmm. Hmm. That was... Uh, alam mo, Hazel, actually, I was expecting a different answer. No? Yung, yung typical na naririnig natin sa isang missionary family you know because the either the father or the mother or the parents are always away so uh, I, I so kids will develop um, resentment or of, of, you know of stories like this no na uh, meron ngang ito meron ngang um, term or parang default prejudice sa mga pastor's kids no na sila daw yung pasaway no and uh, 
Yes, and the factor of that is that is uh, dahil dyan, no, lagi sila. Walang, walang, nawala ng time. So parang nanakaw, quote-unquote, ng church or ng mission field yung sana time ng tatay nila or nanay nila para sa kanila. Okay. Pero with your testimony, it's so much different kasi as gr- you growing up, you are, you testify that you never felt the absence of your father kasi he would uh, babawi siya sa inyo no? uh, yeah. bilang mga anak niya. And that's, That's very good. That's an inspiration to me. That's a challenge to me po bilang isang open doors worker for my daughter. And sana po sa inyong lahat na full-time workers maybe or kahit sa trabaho, no, wag po nating um, ipagpapalit ang oras na sana meron tayo sa ating mga anak. No? Kung, kung kailangan umalis, kung kailangan mag-google ng maraming oras, okay lang. Pero let's make sure that we have the same or even more time that we will spend sa ating mga, sa ating pamilya, sa ating mga asawa, sa ating mga anak. And I think that's a Christian testimony. Yung sabi nga ni Hazel kanina, no, that if she felt that ministry is about family. No? His own family, no? their own family, and the persecuted family. Thank you so much, Hazel. Ang daming mga lessons from your uh, testimony. Okay, last question. Um, if ever na you will meet Uh, a Chinese believer na recipient nung Project Pearl Bible na yun. Um, hypothetically, no? what would you say to this person bilang anak ng isa sa mga uh, crew who delivered those, who smuggled those Bibles in his uh, country? Yeah, actually, I've been thinking about that. Kasi mm-hmm. ang interesting lang talaga because we live in a season ngayon uh, where tayo as Filipinos because of all the global issues around us. You know, mm-hmm. Politics, um, conflicts, nations, diseases, pandemic, yeah. and whatnot. Um, I hope, I have to be honest na sometimes I don't personally feel like praying for China. I get into that trap na parang yeah. Um, wala, iba lang yung lahat tayo kasi frustrated and in our frustration, lumalabas yung weaknesses natin. Yes. Um, so, it's good that we're talking about Project Pearl. So, timely ngayon kasi mm-hmm. it, it's about us showing his love to China. And ngayon, parang we're developing those um, unpleasant feelings mm-hmm. towards China because of the situation now. Kaya, nakaka- Bless lang din if we're talking about Project Pearl and mm-hmm. we're going back um, to the core of our Christianity. Mm-hmm. We're going back to the essence of why mm-hmm. we love God. Mm-hmm. And siguro, when you ask that question, parang ang pumasok na word sa akin is God first loved us. He first loved us. And with that love na binigay ni Lord sa atin, that gives us the strength to love people na we personally hindi, parang hindi natin kaya ngayon, ganyan, dahil may naramdaman tayong mga um, frustrations or anger or something, ganyan. And parang na-convict lang ako talaga. <laughs> parang na-correct yung heart ko. Mm-hmm. And I think ngayon, ngayon lang talaga, God revealed to me na mm-hmm. I think there's a purpose na why this generation yung nakakaranas ng pandemic or ng conflict ng nation mm-hmm. or Um, frustration with what's happening with China and how it affects our countries. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is the generation that God has called to minister mm-hmm. to nations just like China. Just like what the uh, our forefathers have done sa Project Pearl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think na baka, baka lang, kanina tanong ko, ano yung Project Pearl ko? Mm-hmm. Baka lang, this is the Project mm-hmm. Pearl of our generation to show God's love to China. And, and yun nga, maybe this time, it's not about literally smuggling Bibles all the way there. Kasi mm-hmm. now we have social media. Yeah. We have so much ways to reach them through just praying for them, through mm-hmm. just expressing His love, encouraging them, mm-hmm. and letting mm-hmm. let them know na kahit ang dami nangyayaring conflict sa politics, mm-hmm. we still love them. Parang ganun. Because it's... Our um, call na, it's our turn to show mm-hmm. what it means to be one in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So, yun. To message sa kanila, yes. um, to the Chinese believers, yes. the Chinese churches, um, 
I pray and declare that God continues to move in your nation. I pray that the legacy of Project Pearl will never die. Mm-hmm. Um, sir, I pray that uh, more and more people that nation will encounter God in a new whole way, in a personal way, um, not just as a religion, but as a relationship, a loving and ongoing relationship with Him. And I pray that um, His Spirit will overflow in every areas of the country, from top to the bottom, from coast to coast. And siguro for the believers, mm-hmm. I pray for um, strength, favor, courage to be upon each and every one of them. Because mm-hmm. they carry the light and so that they can move forward to spread the good news. And mm-hmm. may this church, yung mga believers na nasa China ngayon, mm-hmm. be the key ng change of heart mm-hmm. ng buong nation ng China. And may, may they just breathe life to every government, every aspect mm-hmm. ng Uh, nation na to. Mm. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Hazel. Maraming salamat, uh, Hazel, for your life that is an extension of Kuya Ron's life. No, hindi lang, mga kaibigan, hindi lang yung physical features ni Hazel ang, uh, ang nakuha niya sa kanyang ama. <laughs> But uh, even the um, the spirituality was not even forced, no? But it's just passed on. to his uh, daughter and uh, we ako po I I'm, I'm a close friend of of Hazel and I can testify yes. of the Lord's um, mighty work sa kanyang buhay nung single pa siya nagka boyfriend na engaged nagpakasal at ngayon magiging isang nanay na siya and may the life of Kuya Ron um, his family may be an inspiration po sa atin sa ating lahat no sa ating mga workers, sa mga workers po ngayon in their families at sa ating mga personal din na buhay as a Christians. Isa po sa mga, isa, isa sa reflection ko dito Hazel sa mga live episodes that we did this week is that um, since our theme is people of the word, I, I, I see here the um, yung crucial part ng salita ng Diyos in a revival. Si Brother Andrew sinabi yeah. niya, Um, paano ka magkakaroon ng revival sa mga Christians if the other half is suffering? And so they brought Bibles. And then sa China naman, sa episode kahapon, it was used by the Lord to have those Bibles were used by the Lord for the networks of Chinese pastors and Christians in China for the revival in China. So baka yun ulit ang kailangan natin sa revival that we are crying for sa ating yeah. generation ngayon. No? Okay. the power of God. We once again need to become people of the word. And uh, thank you, Hazel. That yes, you amen. Part of those, of those uh, reminders sa atin, this uh, anniversary live um, episode ng Open Doors. Okay, so this ends our interview with Hazel Paras. Karina, maraming salamat, thank Hazel, for your time. Uh, we you. were inspired. Thank you, It was very oh, heartwarming. Inspired <laughs> It was heartwarming to just look back sa buhay ni Kuya Ron, to be to catch up with you and all those uh, mighty work that the Lord has done in between. So, um, tayo po ay uh, saglit na manalangin as we end. Hindi lang itong interview po natin, but as we end our uh, Facebook Live um, anniversary specials this week for the six, for, in celebration of Open Door 65 years. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we can all be together online. Salamat, Lord, dahil kahit di pa kami pwede mag-face-to-face, ay, uh, we can still do that uh, through technology, through internet, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the episodes that we have this week. Salamat sa mga mensahe ninyo sa amin. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for ministering to us, Lord, especially sa amin pong panahon ngayon. Thank you for the assurance of the power of your word, Lord, for any revival. that has happened in the past and that and the revivals that we are crying now in our nation in the church Lord God in the world Lord we pray we pray for China we pray that you will the believers there Lord will continue to be on their knees in praying for their country at ganun din po kami dito mga Pinoy we will continue to be on our knees in praying for the Philippines Lord as we continue to be together with our fa- together with our families uh, sa panahon po ngayon ng pandemic, continue to be with us and guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. 
Baba Hazel, thank you so much. At uh, regards to your husband and to your little angel na pa parating na. Halapit <laughs> ng parating. Yes. Yes. Uh, ingat kayo dyan. At uh, marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat for joining us for our third Facebook Live Anniversary Special tonight. God bless you all. Bye-bye.